Hello, my awesome project managers, your friend Phil here. I got a student question in today, and that is what I would like to address. So the question is with regards to the 49 processes. Rochelle, thank you for writing in. Rochelle says, I've been watching the videos and recommended everyone memorize the 49 processes. Is this necessary? Assuming it is, I really don't want to. How to recommend doing that? I am terrible at memorizing the knowledge areas and process groups took me forever. Should I use the mnemonics and just watch the video every day? Do you have any other tip to help? What about the ITTOs? What about the equations? These are very, very good questions. And I'm going to give you some answers. I wish I had my whiteboard to um, draw a few things on, but in absence of the whiteboard, first of all, memorizing the process names is not a bad thing, but most importantly, know what the process does. And that helps give you a base to use to jog your memory. For example, what does the project charter give you? The project charter. Okay. Now, not all processes follow that configuration. Excuse me. <coughs> I wanted to spare you. <laughs> but not all processes have that configuration. But knowing what comes from it, you should be able to tie that to the process name. Like define scope. It gives you the project scope statement. See? Develop schedule gives you the schedule baseline or project schedule. Control schedule gives you schedule forecasts. Control cost gives you cost forecast. So all that stuff is important. Honestly, if you do not remember the major outputs of every process, it could be a problem. So what are the overarching mnemonics? I prefer eating mangoes chilled. I prefer eating mangoes chilled. I initiating, prefer planning, eating, executing, mangoes, monitoring and controlling, chilled, closing. And then the Cuban mnemonic, I saw six Cubans quietly rolling cigars, really puffing smoke. That's the integration all the way on down. If you apply yourself, I believe you should get these down pat in a day for the process groups and knowledge areas. For the processes, use the mnemonics that I have online. In fact, just Google Praiseon PMP mnemonics. You'll find a number of mnemonics for the sixth edition. You know, for example, the one for integration is David dances delightfully. Most mornings playing chords. David dances delightfully most mornings playing chords. Develop project charter, David, plan, uh, develop project management plan, dances, delightfully direct and manage project work, you know, like that. So have that mnemonic down and daily practice the mnemonic. I mean, if you sat down for a straight 10 minutes to invest in understand or remembering a mnemonic and tying it to process names, it is a great use of time. You, th this is the 101, Rochelle. This is the 101 of PMP. You got to know your process names, okay? So if you sat down with David Dances Delightfully, most mornings playing calls for 10 minutes, writing it out, develop project charter, develop project management plan, direct and manage project work, um, manage project knowledge, monitor and control project work, perform and grade change control, you know, close project or phase. It is time very well spent. Very, very well spent. And that is just the first layer. You got to do it. It's like someone asking you, what's your cousin's name? <laughs> you you got to know your cousin's name. That's how I see the processes. They're like your first cousins. <laughs> you got to know the process names. There's no way out other than know them. You got to know them. And then you got to tie them to which uncle are those from? <laughs> you see, which, which process group, which knowledge area, seriously. All right. Now, the next layer of paint after knowing your process groups, your knowledge areas, and then going through those mnemonics, for example, the one for scope is 
The one for scope, I believe, is Prince Charles dances Calypso very confidently. Prince Charles dances Calypso very confidently. Prince, plan, scope management. Charles, collect requirements. Uh, dances, define scope. Calypso, create WBS. Very, validate scope confidently. Control scope. I mean, it's that simple. I, I mean, I haven't even applied myself to remembering the, the mnemonics, but because I've watched my dumb videos so much, I remember the dumb mnemonics. The one for schedule is PMI, or let me, there are two. There's PMI don't schedule enough during changes because whenever they're changing the exam, they keep leading you on for months and then, oh, we're going to change it in December. Oh, no, wait. <laughs> we're changing it in July 2020 and things like that. So my mnemonic is PMI don't schedule enough during changes. They need to schedule in advance. I'm glad they pushed that exam, though. And then I have another one still for schedule. It is people don't sing enough during concerts. Or you could say people don't sing enough during church services, whatever. Just have a mnemonic and make it work. So for, for schedule, people, plan schedule management, um, don't define activities, sing, sequence activities, enough, estimate activity durations during develop schedule, uh, concerts, control schedule. Is that simple? Is that simple? You know, so if, if I were you, I would go through all those my mnemonics, make it a daily 10 minute activity, take out a blank piece of paper, write down what is that dumb mnemonic? Remember the mnemonic and tie it back to the process names. Okay, do that for all of them. There are all sorts of colorful mnemonics there. There's uh, plan communications management, monitor communications. A manage communications and monitor communications. And that one is Puffy made millions. <laughs> Puffy, isn't that funny? There are many funny mnemonics in the list. I'm gonna try to put a link down below so that you can uh, take a look at all these ridiculous mnemonics that I've put up there. You know, some people laugh, they say they're cheesy, they're ridiculous, I agree. But the cheesier the better, because you won't forget it. Because <laughs> no one forgets cheese. You won't forget it. <clears throat> so, uh, Rochelle, that is my advice, you know, master the names, okay? First coat of paint, process groups. Next coat of paint, knowledge areas. Next coat of paint, layer by layer, all the knowledge areas, okay? Um, some of my students, they keep notes around the house on the walls, on the doors, so that as they're passing, they just do a quick dump of these mnemonics. Some of them have a wall. Actually, one of my students... He had an entire room for his PMP prep, and he put all sorts of post-its on the wall. With, In fact, he had all the ITTOs handwritten, handwritten on his wall. And he would go there, and you know, he would use the wall like he was in an exhibition. Isn't that funny? But it helped him. He's now PMP. He got three ATs. You got to do everything possible to drink the Kool-Aid. You got to do everything possible to get the information aligned. Okay. I know how hard it can be. Like right now, I'm studying a new topic in leadership and just having everything straightened out and aligned is a bit of a challenge, but it's working. It's sticking. You see, what, it, what I found to stick first as I study a process is not the process name. It is what is being done. If it could stick what you're doing, then the name is the icing on the cake, you know. So um, my advice to you um, would be to study so that the stuff you're studying in the detail sticks, you know, like how to bake a cake, step one is mix ingredients. But if you actually imagine, what does that look like visually? I'm whisking, I'm, you know, you, you, gotta, you gotta see it in your mind's eye. You gotta see it in your mind's eye, Rochelle, you gotta see it. 
So let me help you. <clears throat> For me, when I'm thinking about um, integration, develop project charter, I'm seeing a project manager in a room with a project sponsor. And just imagine people from your day-to-day -day life. But imagine you're sitting down with a blank piece of paper and you're writing out the key high-level details of the project. So I have that image of me in, in that situation, right? When I think of develop project management plan, I am seeing myself with my team back in the day when I worked in a well-known airlines company here in Arizona, I am seeing myself around the table with that team and we're putting together various pieces of information to get to a project management plan. I'm seeing someone handing me over a quality management plan and someone from a different department handing me over a risk management plan and someone handing me a communications management plan. I'm visualizing what I'm reading. You see what I'm saying? When I think of direct and manage project work, I think of myself on a job site. I changed my view. I'm now on, on a construction site and I'm pointing and directing what's going on. That's how you got to visualize it. I've given you three pictures. One of me in an office, one of me in a large conference room with a number of people. The one in the small conference room or the small room was just me and my sponsor. The one in the bigger one is developing the plan. The one with me high on top of a building somewhere pointing and directing is director manage project work. Manage project knowledge. I have another visual of me in a meeting with people and asking them questions. What have you learned? What have you learned? And I'm taking from them, not a big old binder like develop project management plan. They're handing to me some loose leaf forms. I'm looking at the form like, okay, th these are the lessons you learned. And then I'm imagining myself going, I'm imagining myself going to the library in that company and filing these pieces of knowledge. I'm, I'm imagining that I'm converting that knowledge into some electronic file, maybe on a computer. And that's information management. And then when I'm getting the, the minds to rub and, and produce the knowledge, that's knowledge management, connecting people to knowledge they need. So whatever you read in the PMBOK guide, you got to connect it to a picture in your head. That's how it works. And it sticks. Now, some people do not have to intentionally do this. In fact, the reason why I intentionally do it more is to be able to put myself into my students' shoes and give them actionable examples. But a lot of people are like, oh, when I do this, that's what I'm doing. Or when I did this early on today, that's the process I was in. You see, that's the frame of mind, Rochelle. That's, that's how you need to be thinking about this stuff. You gotta make it very actionable and pragmatic. And then the names stick even more. Then the inputs and outputs and tools and techniques stick even more. So do you need to know them? No, I'm cold. Is memorization the only way? No, you don't have to memorize at first. I would advise you to understand more than anything else and everything comes naturally. Let me give you a, a very basic example. Someone says, what do I do first? Do I estimate the activities durations or do I estimate the resources? I expect you to give me two scenarios where either one can come first. I could give you a scenario where you estimate durations first. When would that happen? Based on hard deadlines, hard dates. When would you do the other? When there's flexibility, you see. When there are constraints on resources, that may be all you have. You know, Maybe you estimate the resources first and they're constrained. Based on that, the date follows. And a number of permutations. In fact, it's very iterative. But you should be able to break the PMBOK apart, plug and play. You know, That's what I'm expecting from you, okay? Regarding the tools and techniques, my advice to you again is to see 
the input or output of tool and technique. And if there's anyone you need an example for, open up the project management essentials ebook you've got. And if that doesn't work, send an email and say, Phil, this one, I don't have it. I don't know what this looks like. And I'll find you an example. But the inputs, tools, techniques, and outputs, you absolutely need to know. I'm not talking about memorize. There's no value in, in someone saying, TCPI is too complete performance index. TCPI is too complete performance index. So what? So what if you know what it's called? What is it used for? What does it do? Or someone gives you a question and says, you're trying to you're trying to finalize a report that shows you if you'll meet management's cost objective and how hard you would have to work to meet management's cost objective. Which process are you in? If you don't know that that describes TCPI, which you use in control cost, you won't get that question right. You'll choose probably like plan cost manager. You see what I'm saying? So you got to know not just the not just the tool and technique name, not just the input name, not just the output name. You have to know what you are doing, and then you need to know the implication of whatever you get. All right. So let me see. I think I got all your questions, Rochelle. Um, is this necessary to know the forty nine processes? Know the names. Absolutely, the names are very important. Um, how do you do that? I've given you tips, post-its on the wall, given yourself imagery, images, you know. Um, I call them uh, scenarios. Build a scenario from your real-world experience, you know. Th all these things I told you anyway. Um, use the mnemonics as well. And the video every day would be good. And I hope these other tips have helped. The ITT is the same. Now the equations. The equations. For the equations, I would advise that you, uh, let's see, Google. Um, if you Google, it is going to work. Um, Google Prazion. There's a Google, Google Prazion PMP brain dump practice along. And it's going to come up with a practice along video that I put up a while back. Fighting. And yep, it's a, it's a practice along video that is going to help you master the, is going to help you master the, um, the formulas. Yeah. In fact, it's been so long. I call it PMP brain dump power. Oh, that's a good practice along video. And I would highly recommend that you watch it. Yeah, it is. Um, it is several hours long. It's like a 10 hour non-stop, non-stop practice along video. So I would highly recommend uh, that you practice along with that. And um, I will endeavor to put a link somewhere in this video. All right. Okay, Rochelle. Well, I hope this gives you some ideas about how to master these. And if you have any further questions, um, don't hesitate to let me know. All right. Thank you for the question. All the best in your prep. Bye for now.